So it's summertime, and I know when you're here, it's the winter time, and you could think, well, how do you remember that it's summer? I even remember my first summer here in the summer of 2005. I was an intern in Cantor Barrick's office, shivering around a space heater, and I was reading about a heat wave in, the, in Chicago, where I think six people had died from the heat, and I was trying to stay warm in there. But you know, when I, when I get to this time of year in the summer, and I think for a lot of us, it's a time of nostalgia, where we think, where was I way back when at this time in the summer? One of the things that always comes to my mind, because we have people in the community who are in Israel now, people who are leaving in a few days to Israel, you're seeing on Facebook, everyone's trip to Israel, who are there right now. And I think back to my very first time that I went to Israel. I was 16 years old, and I had always learned about it, and I had the, the love and the mythology in my heart, and, I, and this was the old Ben-Gurion airport that you'd get off the plane down the stairs, and I, I kissed the pavement, which was schmutz. It had oil on it. I probably shouldn't have done it, but I still kissed the pavement because I, I was in the land of milk and honey. And I remember thinking during that summer that you would hear these stories from this week's parsha from Shalach, of that the spies were sitting there in Jordan looking across the valley into Israel, and these 12 spies were sent in, and 10 of the spies go there, and they go, Oi! The giant's there! This place is overwhelming, and we look like grasshoppers. We're not going to be able to handle this place. But there was two. There was Joshua and Caleb who come across, and they go, Listen, I'm not saying there's not giants there, but we can do this. This is the land of milk and honey. Now, because the majority said that, everyone followed what those 10 spies said, and we went on this 40-year journey of not being allowed into the land. But that summer, I kept thinking about that story, and I kept thinking, this, this really is the land of milk and honey. There is an energy there which is indescribable. And, and I think back to all the summers that I would spend in Israel, and there is a heat that still radiates out of that Jerusalem stone at nighttime when you walk around. There's a warmth, and there's dripping pink flowers all over the place. And I even think back to that 2005. Yes, 2005. Right after my summer here, I went with Elisa to Israel for my fourth year, and we were studying Hasidic texts together, which were the popular version of mysticism post-Kabbalah. And we were looking at my, my teacher who was guiding me in my thesis was Rabbi Lawrence Kushner. And he wanted me to study the Baal Shem Tov and Rabbi Nachman of Bratzlav. And Elisa is a therapist, an LCSW. And in the middle of studying this, she stops. She goes, this is unbelievable. This is cognitive behavioral therapy. And this is hundreds of years before it's called cognitive behavioral therapy because that's where the Baal Shem Tov's mind was. And there was this one text that we got to from Nachman of Bratzlav where he wrote, you are where your thoughts are. Make sure your thoughts are where you want to be. And it made me think about where my thoughts are today, not back in 2005, but where are my thoughts today in 2023, 18 years later. And when I moved from that past into the present, I got to be honest, because 2023 is incredibly challenging. The more I've been thinking about this, this week of, of what my view is when I look east, because we're kind of on the edge. The ocean is just a few blocks that way. But if I look this way, east, it feels like I'm living in a land of giants. And I feel like this little tiny grasshopper. If I look just east enough, in our city, you can read the Chronicle every single day about the next store closing, the next hotel not renewing. You read about this, this doom loop. You hear about SF State, which is just the numbers are plummeted of people that are there in person. The numbers haven't even regained back to where they were pre-pandemic. There was the, the news that came out today that... From January till now, we've had 346 people 
die in this city from drug overdose. 346. And it is a, it is a clip much faster than it was last year at this time, outpacing all of that time. And they have caught enough fentanyl, they've taken it off the streets, to kill every single person in this city three times. In this city, we've gotten enough fentanyl off the street to kill 2.1 million people. So it's a little overwhelming. And I, I, feel like, I feel like this tiny little grasshopper. And so I find that I'm like, well, I'm just going to look past a little further east, past San Francisco. And I, and I look to where our country is, and I see the division in our country. I see the perilous state of our democracy. I see the former president using civil war-like language, referring to this indictment and this campaign as, quote, the final battle. And it's a little overwhelming. And I feel really small. So I keep looking east. And my sight that lands in Ukraine. And my son just earlier this week, he heard that on NPR. And he said, wait, that war is still happening? We're like, yeah, that, that war is still happening. And then we also found out that Belarus now has nuclear weapons from Russia. And it's a bit overwhelming. And 500 migrants are now missing, presumed to be dead as their boat capsized off of Greece. And so I'm so overwhelmed, I zoom back and you look at the planet and you find out it's the hottest month in the history of all records of where we are temperature-wise now. And it's a little overwhelming. And I feel like this grasshopper. And I think back to Nachman of Bratislav, and then he says that you are where your thoughts are. And that's why I feel like such a grasshopper. Now, those Israelites in this week's parsha, when, when they go into that land of Israel and they see giants and they feel overwhelmed, they, had, they understood clearly what they saw. And, and it's in a reminder on the most basic level that if you feel overwhelmed, if you feel like a grasshopper, you're not the first generation to do so. People that have come before us have felt this way. Maybe the circumstances are different, but other generations have felt this way. But what's different this week in that parsha is that Nachman of Bratislav was correct. Their thoughts is what made their reality. You see, it's not that there were not giants in Israel. There were. Caleb says it. He's like, yeah, there's giants. But they stayed right there. It's not that San Francisco is not in a valley right now. We are. Our democracy is teetering. The climate has challenges. There is a war in Ukraine. It's all real. But if you stay right there and you only stay in that one band, that reality will become the only reality. It was that same summer that when we were thinking about names for our children that we didn't have yet, that we would eventually have, we loved that name Caleb. Because Caleb was the one who could go in there and he wasn't wearing rose-colored glasses. It wasn't that. He, he knew what the reality was, but he also talked about what the world could be. What Caleb does is that he challenges the reality of what's in front of him. His power is that he says that something is possible, is that he sees beyond the is and he begins to talk about the odd. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory, he makes this profound point about this week's parsha is that connected inside this episode of the spies, it's by two key words which is, you shall see, and then the, the, the verb, la tour. Now, the key sentence is that, is that one that says about the thread of the blue seat seat that you have here on, on the talus right there. And it says right here, this is the part that we were reading in the Via Hafta earlier. It says, quote, when you see it, you will remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and not follow 
after your own heart and your own eyes. The point of seeing this, of that, of that blue line inside the tzitzit, is to remember that there's something bigger than you, bigger than this current reality. That's the radical idea in Judaism. The radical idea in Judaism is that there is an infinite God. That all of reality that we are in is interconnected and beyond our own comprehension. Which means everything has infinite possibilities. When we limit our vision just by what we fear, then we begin to actualize and make that fear real. And we don't move past that. That's why we have the seat seat. That's why we put God at the very front of our mind in everything that we see. Nachman of Bratislav, he didn't just say that one line, you are where your thoughts are. He doesn't finish right there. He says, you are where your thoughts are. And make sure your thoughts are where you want to be. To think that a little tiny human like this, look at yourself, you're not so big. To think that us little tiny things could change the temperature of the entire planet Earth, it's overwhelming. I mean, it is beyond comprehension that we could do that, but we did that. Now, if we did that, what else could we do? You suddenly realize that you have infinite potential. There's sometimes our potential becomes very negative on what we do with it. But there's also the potential to add the divine light into the world where you can change the world. That's the fundamental choice this week's Parsha, it lays right in front of us. Is that there's a choice that we have of which side of the team we're going to be on. Are we going to be on the team of the ten spies that say, there are giants, I feel like a grasshopper, and that's what the reality is? Or are we going to choose to be like Caleb and Joshua and say, there are giants, there's a lot going on here, and the world ought to be a different way? and then actualize that other vision. And because of Joshua and Caleb, I got off a plane in Israel when I was 16. And it was a land of milk and honey. And we have people there right now. And if you get to SFO in time, you can catch the 8 o'clock fight back to Israel. The realities have happened all around us of things that we have dreamed of. But it's our job to live in the ought and not is. If we live in the fear, the world will become fear. If we keep talking doom loop, it will be a doom loop. But if we dream and we hope and we shift our vision to that blue thread of knowing that there is divine potential everywhere, then there could be divine potential everywhere. Ken Yehiratso.